Hi, I'm Vern Powell. I'm sure there's a fair few of you that that uh, have seen me around. Uh, Cultural Exchange Chair and uh, Regional Director for uh, Region 3 and the American Ferry Association. Um, we're here doing a couple little tips and tricks and stuff that I've picked up over the years and something that I kind of, I guess, came up with on my own. I'm sure there's probably a bunch of other people out there that do it, but it's something I learned because Heather Boschman and I try to think of ways that we can practice and help each other and think of things slightly differently. Um, it's really easy to fall into looking at feet sizes in factory sizes, so a one, a two, a three, a four, something like that. Um, it's, it becomes a challenge when you start making handmade shoes for contests, and it's something that I've certainly struggled with, so trying to train my eye to look at feet in steel lengths rather than standard factory sizes, keg shoe sizes. One of the things that I learned when I went on the cultural exchange program from Gary Darlow uh, back in 2006 um, was how to mark shoes in that you can pick up a shoe and remember exactly what it is. In a way, it's sort of like cheating, just like having a one or a two or a three on there. But what I've done here is I put my lateral branch mark here at the back. I've also stuck another little branch mark here a quarter of the way up the shoe. It's fairly easy to tell the difference between a 12 inch, 13 inch, 14 inch shoe. The size of this one's automatically going to tell me it's probably in the 14 inch range, but by having two marks here, one a quarter of the way up, it tells me that this steel started as 14 and a quarter inches in length. Now, it has been bumped up. I did bump a quarter of an inch uh, just to give a little bit of lateral support. Uh, it's not a lateral extension, the difference being an extension sort of sticks out to the side. This is just a widened lateral heel. Um, cowhawk horses that tend to be really hard on their outside heel. Um, like I said, Gary Darlow was the one that, that taught me that, and I, I wish I'd learned a ton more things from Gary when I was over there. I haven't seen anybody else do it, uh, but it's something that's always stuck with me, and it's, it's, uh, it's been nice because sometimes when you come back, you forget what length of steel that you made. We've got this little box at home. It's just a recipe box, card index box, with all the names, or uh, all the alphabet, and then we've got names of all the horses that we take and work on that have the names and the measurements of the shoes that we put on. But if we're out in the field, shoes are worn out and we haven't made up extra shoes at home and we can't remember what size they were, we can measure. That's cool. Or hopefully these branch marks are still in there and we say, oh yeah, that was 14 and a quarter. Um, there's no sense or no, uh, it's no substitute for measuring. But in a contest or in a clinic, um, it, or certification rather, it tends to take some of the guesswork out. You can take a look at a foot and you already have it in your mind, hey, I think that's 13 inches, I think that's 13 and a half inches, and it's going to get you in the ballpark. Then when you go ahead and measure the feet, if you get a number that's a little bit weird, stop and second guess yourself because, uh, yeah, that, that seems a bit too much or seems a bit too little. Um, obviously with stock widths, that measurement's going to change slightly. Um, this is just a pair of three-quarter fullards. I know that there's a mark down here and there's a mark three-quarters of the way up the shoe. It's not big enough to be a 13-inch shoe, so this must be 12 and three-quarters. Um, like I said, just another way to mark. Uh, it just helps you out a little bit, like I said, again, with certification and contests. Um, all of the shoes that I have in here, there are some keg shoes in here. I'm not cool enough to make all handmaids. I wish I was. But especially during this lockdown, which has absolutely been awesome for making a whole lot more shoes. We're able to make a whole lot of shoes, write the horse's name on it, and or just write sizes on it. So rather than saying, hey, Heather, can you go grab me a number one? Hey, Heather, pretty sure this is a 12 and a half inch shoe. Can you grab me a pair of 12 and a half? Or if she's under it, she'll say, hey, Vern, go grab me XYZ lengths of steel. So all my measurements are written in here, going from smallest to largest, and it's like a template. You're encouraged in higher exams, the diploma and the AW exam, FW exam over in England, to take in templates. They have to be removed off the floor before the actual uh, exam starts, but you can walk up to your foot that's untrimmed, set a 12-inch shoe on there, or there are going to be bar shoes once you get into the AW and the FW exam. Take a 15 and a 16 and 17-inch bar shoe in there, set it down on the foot. Are you in the hunt? Do you know kind of where you're going to be? Maybe it's going to have a lateral extension. Maybe it's going to be 
jumped up spiral bar shoe there's all kinds of things that you might have to put on but you can add or subtract a little bit based on that but at least if you can set that template down before the exam starts you've already got a little bit in your mind hey I know I'm gonna need 15 and a half inches for this foot so um, hopefully it helps it's uh, it's just a little trick that I kind of picked up and uh, like I said hopefully it helps